China has, seems to be doing quite well, at least until Sri Lanka and Pakistan and so on, in um, making entry into those countries, uh, at least at the uh, government rulers level. Um, so in winning the global south, which will be an important battleground for us, uh, what would be the best approach? Well, first of all, I think we need to make some definitions because um, there's a lot of confusion in terms. When uh, Americans use the term democracy, first of all, they usually mean liberal democracy. And liberal democracy actually consists of two separate sets of institutions that oftentimes go together but are conceptually and practically separate. So liberal, the liberal part of liberal democracy really has to do with a presumption of the juridical equality of you know, all human beings, uh, the existence of individual rights that those uh, uh, citizens have, and the need to protect those rights through a rule of law, through constitutional checks and balances that prevent an excessive concentration of power. The democratic principle really has to do with popular sovereignty and the idea that uh, governments should be accountable to as large a portion uh, of the population as possible. And institutionally, that's represented through multi-party, you know, free and fair elections. Different parts of the world uh, are more aligned with the liberal part and, more, and some are more aligned with the democratic part. I would say that it's striking in Asia that Asians tend to like the liberal part more than the democratic part. So, uh, and therefore, a country like China that has no elections can actually participate in a rules-based um, uh, order. And I think, you know, in this country, uh, that's really been the kind of underlying principle of the, what is it, the free and open Indo-Pacific, right? It's a liberal order much more than it is a democratic order, you're not going to appeal to Laos or Cambodia or you know, in, even, even a democracy like Indonesia primarily by appealing to the democratic part, but you are going to appeal to them by stressing the liberal part. In Europe, it's actually, I think, a little bit the reverse, that democracy is really the source of legitimacy. And what's happened with the rise of populist regimes like uh, Orban's Hungary is you get democratically elected leaders he's that. Not democratically elected. Well, no, he is democrat. No, Larry, not. Larry Luck. Not no, elected. no, no. It was a democratic. It in terms of the will of the people, it was not a liberal election that happened according to procedural, you know, to strict procedural rules. There is no question that he got a big majority of the vote in, in Hungary. And then he used that power to undermine the liberal part uh, of liberal democracy. This is also what Modi has done. Modi has been very popular in India, and he's been eroding the liberal part uh, of liberal democracy. The populist movements in Western countries have largely been democratically legitimated, but they're not liberal, including Donald Trump. One further observation is just a kind of self-reflection of about you know Americans. American national identity has been connected to the idea of both liberalism and democracy much more deeply than virtually any other country in the world. Uh, and in fact, so I mean just think about Japan or Italy or you know uh, Sweden. These were all countries way before they were democracies and you know, they've got their own cultures, their own, you know, food, their own uh, history that way preceded the rise of democracy. That's just not true for Americans, you know, because we're an incredibly diverse, ethnically, racially, religiously, you know, country. We used to be much more, much less pluralistic, but even from the beginning, you know, you had a big racial division in, in the United States, and therefore you couldn't base, um, American identity so easily over time, you know, on race, religion, you know, inherited culture, because we basically didn't have an inherited culture. It all came from other places, and therefore, liberal democracy becomes the source of American identity. And I do think that Americans sometimes have a problem in not realizing that not everybody in the world is like that, right? That 
Democracy means something very deeply to many people around the world, as does liberalism, again, in different proportions in different countries, but uh, as, a, as a unifying uh, principle, it works in some places and we should take you know, advantage of it, but in other parts of the world, uh, you know, that might not be the, the thing that you want to lead with. It may be economic growth, and certainly for many developing countries, in a way, that's kind of an argument for stressing the liberal rather than the democratic part, because in general, liberal regimes have been better at you know, promoting growth than, you know, than democratic ones.